Chapter 10 of Famous Men of the Middle Ages. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox. L I B R I V O X dot org. Chapter 10 of Famous Men of the Middle Ages by John H. Harden and A. B. Poland. Charles Martel, 714 to 741 A.D and Pepin, 741 to 768 A.D. Part 1 After the death of Mohammed, the Saracens, as Mohammedans are also called, became great warriors. They conquered many countries and established the Mohammedan religion in them. In 711 the Saracens invaded and conquered a great part of Spain, and founded a powerful kingdom there, which lasted about seven hundred years. They intended to conquer the land of the Franks next, and then all Europe. They thought it would be easy to conquer the Franks, because the Frankish king at that time was a very weak man. He was one of a number of kings who were called the Do-Nothings. They reigned from about 638 to 751. They spent all their time in amusements and pleasures, leaving the affairs of the government to be managed by persons called mayors of the palace. The mayors of the palace were officers who at first managed the king's household. Afterwards, they were made guardians of kings who came to the throne when very young. As long as the king was under age, the mayor of the palace acted as chief officer of the government in his name and as several of the young kings, even when they were old enough to rule, gave less attention to business than to pleasure, the mayors continued to do all the business, until at last they did everything the, the king ought to have done. They made war, led armies in battle, raised money and spent it, and carried on the government as they pleased, without consulting the kings. The do-nothings had the title of king, but nothing more. In fact, they did not desire to have any business to do. The things they cared for were dogs, horses, and sport. The most famous of the mayors was a man called Pepin. Once a year, it is said, Pepin had the king dressed in his finest clothes and paraded through the city of Paris, where the court was held. A splendid throng of nobles and courtiers accompanied the king and did him honour as he went along the streets in a gilded chariot drawn by a long line of beautiful horses. The king was cheered by the people, and he acknowledged their greetings most graciously. After the parade, the king was escorted to the great hall of the palace, which was filled with nobles. Seated on a magnificent throne, he saluted the assemblage and made a short speech. The speech was prepared beforehand by Pepin, and committed to memory by the king. At the close of the ceremony, the royal nobody retired to his country house and was not heard of again for a year. Part 2 Pepin died in 714 AD, and his son Charles, who was twenty-five years old at that time, succeeded him as mayor of the palace. This Charles is known in history as Charles Martel. He was a brave young man. He had fought in many of his father's battles, and so had become a skilled soldier. His men were devoted to him. While he was mayor of the palace, he led armies in several wars against the enemies of the Franks. The most important of his wars was won with the Saracens, who came across the Pyrenees from Spain and invaded the land of the Franks, intending to establish Mohammedanism there. Their army was led by Abd er Rahman, the Saracen governor of Spain. On his march through the southern districts of the land of the Franks, Abd er Rahman destroyed many towns and villages, killed a number of the people, and seized all the property he could carry off. He plundered the city of Bordeaux, and it is said obtained so many valuable things that every soldier was loaded with golden vases and cups and emeralds and other precious stones. But meanwhile, Charles Martel was not idle. As quickly as he could, he got together a great army of Franks and Germans and marched against the Saracens. The two armies met between the city of Tours and Poitiers 
in October 732. For six days there was nothing but an occasional skirmish between small parties from both sides, but on the seventh day a great battle took place. Both Christians and Mohammedans fought with terrible earnestness. The fight went on all day, and the field was covered with the bodies of the slain. But toward evening, during a resolute charge made by the Franks, Abd er Rahman was killed. Then the Saracens gradually retired to their camp. It was not yet known, however, which side had won, and the Franks expected that the fight would be renewed in the morning. But when Charles Martel, with his Christian warriors, appeared on the field at sunrise, there was no enemy to fight. The Mohammedans had fled in the silence and darkness of the night, and had left behind them all their valuable spoils. There was now no doubt which side had won. The Battle of Tours, of Poitiers, as it should be called, is regarded as one of the decisive battles of the world. It decided that Christians, and not Muslims, should be the ruling power in Europe. Charles Martel is especially celebrated as the hero of this battle. It is said that the name Martel was given to him because of his bravery during the fight. Martou is the French word for hammer, and one of the old French historians says that as a hammer breaks and crushes iron and steel, so Charles broke and crushed the power of his enemies in the Battle of Tours. But though the Saracens fled from the battlefield of Tours, they did not leave the land of the Franks, and Charles had to fight other battles with them before they were finally defeated. At last, however, he drove them across the Pyrenees, and they never again attempted to invade Frankland. After his defeat of the Saracens, Charles Martel was looked upon as the great champion of Christianity, and to the day of his death, in 741, he was, in reality, though not in name, the King of the Franks. Part 3 Charles Martel had two sons, Pépin and Carloman. For a time they ruled together, but Carloman wished to lead a religious life, so he went to a monastery and became a monk. Then Pépin was sole ruler. Pépin was quite low in stature, and therefore was called Pépin the Short, but he had great strength and courage. A story is told of him which shows how fearless he was. One day he went with a few of his nobles to a circus to see a fight between a lion and a bull. Soon after the fight began, it looked as though the bull were getting the worst of it. Pepin cried out to his companions, Will one of you separate the beasts? But there was no answer. None of them had the courage to make the attempt. Then Pepin jumped from his seat, rushed into the arena, and with a thrust of his sword killed the lion. In the early years of Pepin's rule as mayor of the palace, the throne was occupied by a king named Hilderic III. Like his father and other do-nothing kings, Hilderic cared more for pleasures and amusements than for affairs of government. Pepin was the real ruler, and after a while he began to think that he ought to have the title of king, as he had all the power and did all the work of governing and defending the kingdom. So he sent some friends to Rome to consult the Pope. They said to his holiness, Holy Father, who ought to be the King of France, the man who has the title, or the man who has the power and does all the duties of the King? Certainly, replied the Pope, the man who has the power and does the duties. Then surely, said they, Pepin ought to be the King of the Franks, for he has all the power. The Pope gave his consent, and Pepin was crowned King of the Franks, and thus the reign of Hilderic ended, and that of Pepin began. During nearly his whole reign, Pepin was engaged in war. Several times he went to Italy to defend the Pope against the Lombards. These people occupied certain parts of Italy, including the province still called Lombardy. Pepin conquered them and gave as a present to the Pope that part of their processions which extended for some distance around Rome. This was called Pepin's donation. It was the beginning of what is known as the temporal power of the popes, that is, their power as rulers a part of Italy. 
Pepin died in 768. End of chapter 10. Recording by Andy from Infernon. Emil.